There's another device, and that's what you're holding. Some of you probably, if you don't have one, I think we probably still have some extra ones somewhere. Uh, it's a diffraction grating. So what a diffraction grating is, now we're taking the idea of interference between two slits. It's empty? Okay. If you don't have one, just share with, uh, with somebody next to you. We're going to take a look at this lamp in a minute after I explain the theory of it. So a diffraction grating is just a screen, just like you, we've been discussing, but instead of two slits, this is the side view of the screen, so you're looking at one slit here, another one slit here, another one here, here, and so on. You have many of them, right? Again, you send a wave, a light wave from the left. Distance between the slits, we're going to call it D. And so each one of these slits is going to behave as a source, just like Huygens' principle says. Right? And that source is going to have a cone, a diffraction cone around it. But because of those diffraction cones overlapping with each other, those waves, the wave of this and the wave produced by this, they're going to interfere with each other. Right? <coughs> now, if these two waves, when they arrive at the screen, which in this picture will be really far away because those lines look like... Uh, parallel, at that point on the screen where they uh, overlap each other, if again the difference in distance traveled by this wave and this wave is a multiple of lambda, right? if that distance that we talked about before, which is something somewhere here, if that distance is again a multiple of lambda, then this wave is going to interfere constructively with this. But because um, the, difference, the difference in phase between this one and this one is a multiple of 2 pi, the difference between this one and this one is again going to be a multiple of 2 pi because the geometry is exactly the same. The distance is the same, the angle is the same. So if this one's behind this one by 2 pi, this one's going to be behind this one by 2 pi, the face is going to be behind the other one by 2 pi, and so on and so forth. So constructive interference between these two waves uh, means that there is constructive interference with every wave coming out of those slits. So at that point in the screen where these two uh, interfere constructively, everybody interferes constructively. <clears throat> so at those points on the screen where that condition is satisfied, you have a very bright uh, spot. And the important thing about the diffraction pattern is that the spots are very much brighter than just with a two slit. And they're better resolved because there is less, uh, in between the bright spots, there is a very dark, there are very dark lines. So if you look at an interference pattern of two slit, it kind of looks like uh, wide, um, bright regions separated by uh, some narrow, dark regions. And sometimes it's not very clear to tell where the, this bright one ends and where the next bright begins. But with a diffraction grading, that's a lot simpler. So the equation that we're looking at is, again, the sine of theta m equals m lambda over, the v over d, because that equation describes the condition where the difference in phase between this slit and the one separated by distance d is such that it's a multiple of lambda. So this equation is applying for two of these slits, but it applies to all of them. <clears throat> if there is interference, as I said, between those two, is there is interference with everybody. Now what happens if you shine light on a diffraction grating that has not only not one wavelength, but a number of wavelengths? Suppose that you're shining light from this side, right? Say that is red light, right? And then when you look at the screen, you find a maximum on the screen here, a bright spot of the laser there, and another bright spot there, and here, and here. Now suppose you shine two lights, one blue and one red. What is this equation telling you about the location of the maxima for the red laser and for the blue laser? Let's start with which one has the biggest wavelength, the red one or the blue one? The red one has the biggest uh, wavelength, around 600 nanometers or something like that, 640. The blue one has a shorter wavelength, right? So what does this equation tell you about the angle at which you find, say, the first maximum? <clears throat> It will be greater for the red line, 
and so below that one you would find the maximum for the blue laser okay so this little device this diffraction grating is separating in space the two colors right so you could be shining the laser the two uh, laser beams the blue and the red one together right making what color is that blue and magenta i guess and after it goes through the diffraction grating, they are separated. Each laser goes in a different, slightly different path. And it hits the screen at a slightly different location. Right? <coughs> so if you take your diffraction grating and you look at one of those uh, light bulbs above you, you will see a rainbow. Because the light produced by the light bulb, it's a white light and it has a continuous spectrum, all of the different wavelengths are there when all of those colors go through a diffraction grating. As we just saw, the red goes a little higher, the blue goes a little lower, which means it separates the white light into its uh, constituent colors. So you would see a rainbow when you look at those lights. Okay. <coughs> now I want you to look at the light coming from this lamp. Maybe I should turn off some of the lights here, make it brighter. You see a line spectrum. That means that not all the colors are present. That would be the first observation. And they're widely spread. Right? You see a very clear clear lines of one color here, and another line of a different color here, and another line of a different color here, and so on. So what do you think those colors are coming from? What is that telling you about this lamp? It's telling you which specific wavelengths this orange light that you see with your eyes has. It looks orange, but it's actually is made of different colors. And it's not made of a continuous range of colors like the light from the sun or from that light bulb, but it's actually discrete uh, colors, wavelengths. What do you think those wavelengths depend on? Whatever gas you have. So basically what's happening here is a, it's a electric current is exciting the atoms. So I think this is sodium. So those sodium atoms, the electrons get excited. They go to, the deep, to higher levels, right? When they decay, they emit light. But as you know from chemistry, uh, the levels of an atom, the levels in which the electrons can exist, are very discrete. They're specific. So that means that the energy that an electron can give off when it goes from one level to another is a particular number. And that is associated with a particular frequency, that thanks to, Newton, to Einstein, and that particular frequency is associated with a particular wavelength. Okay? So those transitions, atomic transitions of the gas inside this, uh, emit light with specific lines, specific frequencies, which show up when you use something as simple as that uh, diffraction grating as specific lines. So this is a fantastic way of finding out what, for example, a gas that is emitting light is made of. If you wanted to find out what a star is made of, all you have to do is point a telescope at it, make the light, pass the light through a diffraction grating, and what you'll see will be little copies of the image of the star, right, but with different colors. And each one of the colors, it's a signature of the elements present in that star. Because you know if the star has sodium, there should be a line here, and a line here, and a line here. If it has hydrogen, there should be a line here, and a line here, and so on. So just by looking at the spectrum, you can tell what an object, which is millions of years away, millions of light years away, is made of. So the diffraction grading equation, as I said, looks just like the other equation that you've seen today for the two-slit diffraction, for the diffraction of a single slit. In this case, the equation, as in the two-slit case, refers to the location of the bright spots on the screen. Okay, so you want to make a, a note there. And something very important to keep in mind about uh, diffraction gradings is that the D, the distance between the the slits can be a very small number. They can make these diffraction gratings, oh, I thought I had something there, with a very, very short distance between them. So what that tells you is that, ah, oh, it's right here. It, what that tells you is that for diffraction gratings, the distance between the slits is not necessarily much bigger than lambda. Okay? So 
do not use the small angle approximation when dealing with a problem that uh, uses a diffraction grating. Because more often than not, that distance will be comparable, maybe 10 times or something like that, lambda, and that's not uh, very small. So what that, what that says, in terms of this equation, what that implies is that the maxima that you see due, due to a diffraction grating are not separated by uniform distances. When you look at the first maxima, the distance between the m equals zero, bright line, and the m equal one, it's not the same as the distance between the m equal one and the m equal two. Okay, it's not the same, it's not gonna be the same angle. 